This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will lift up my voice, thanksgiving in my heart. I will be praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Whoa, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. <coughs> he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh. All right, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. I will lift up my voice, thanksgiving in my heart. I will lift up my voice with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad, he has made me glad, and I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad, and I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, bum, bum, bum. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just one more time. Amen. Finding the saved and sanctified. Amen. Filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and have no other mind but to see what the end is going to be. We're grateful to the Lord. Amen. Here at the city of David. Praise God for what God is doing in our lives. Oh, yeah. It's not a point that we don't have any problems. Praise God. Amen. But we trusted in God. Trusting in God that God would make the way for us. We're believing God woo, for miracles in our lives. We're believing God for overflow at the city of David. God is doing great things in our lives. And so we thank and praise God this morning for you, you, and you. Those that are in our service and those that are uh, watching us via Facebook. We thank God for you this morning. And so we want to say thank you to our contributors, those that invest and support in this ministry. We want to take this time out first and foremost to tell you thank you. Thank you for all that you do, your time, your talent, and your treasure. Thank you. Amen. We appreciate all that you do. Praise God. Amen. Never want to overlook, amen, the ones that help us along the way. Praise God. And so we invite you, uh, those in Facebook land, we invite you to come and fellowship with us. We're at 3724 Cypress Creek 
uh, Parkway, Suite 115, Houston, Texas, 77. 068 amen we're located in the rear of the building praise god amen once you hit that parking lot you'll see us and you can't miss us praise god we also invite you to drop us an email yeah. our email address is cod church the number seven at gmail.com we would love to hear from you praise god we invite you also to our youtube channel under the heading city of david church Houston, where we believe here at the city, there's going to be something there, amen, that would enhance your life, praise God. Nothing but the word of God is going to enhance us and to help us through uh, life's trials and life's struggles. Not only that, help us to see God in a whole new, different light, praise God. For we here at the city, praise God, amen, we reel about God and his word. And so we believe that uh, there will be something there for you. We also ask that you would pray for our, our prison ministry because of Jesus uh, ministries is how we go in and so pray for the ministry that God would bless now uh, as a side note we we went in on yesterday and we had a glorious time Elder Harrison and myself and we had 63 in service and the Lord just blessed and the men were so grateful praise God unto the word that went forth amen we thank God for them they they were saying yesterday that so many people come in but nobody feeds them like we feed them and and it's nothing but the glory of god that's our job and that's our purpose in this walk is that right yeah. praise god that we might feed that we might be a conduit amen for god amen ain't nothing up our sleeve but the word of god sister jones always says praise god and so we thank god for you you and you most of all, it's Women's Day here at the city. Praise God. It's Women's Day here at the city. And so, amen, we thank God uh, for the service uh, or for the messages that are going to come forth from our young women here at the city. Praise God. And so we just thank God for growth. We thank God just for the word of God in itself. Praise God. Amen. Sister Harrison, Ella Harrison, we miss you this morning. Praise God. If you're watching, praise the Lord. Amen. But we just thank God for you all, and we thank God for you. We're going to have prayer, and then once we go before the throne of grace, you'll be in the hands of Sister Jones. It's going to take us uh, uh, to another level and to another place. But as we entreat the Lord, Praise God this morning as we stand and entreat the Lord. God, we thank you this morning. We bless and we praise your name. We thank you, God, even right now for all of your tender mercies, oh God. We thank you for what you've done for us, oh God. Though we went through the storm and we went through the rain, God, here we are. We're still standing and we thank you this morning. Thank you for bringing us through and thank you, God, for helping us to endure. Oh God, hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives. Uh, we lift you up this morning, God, because as the sun broke forth this morning, uh, oh God, it was your mercies uh, that woke us this morning. It was your mercies, oh God, uh, that allowed us to rise again. Thank you for new mercies, oh God. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, for your blessings, oh God, for you are blessing us right now, and we thank you. Right now, we're blessed. Right now, God, we thank Thank you in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, we can walk and we have a reasonable portion of our strength. And oh God, we thank you today. Uh, we bless your name today. Uh, for you are God and beside you there is none. God, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, uh, oh God, we ask that you would watch on us. Watch over us today and let your word come forth, oh God. Uh, oh God, with authority, uh, let it come with the anointing, oh God. Uh, help us today, God. Uh, oh God, that we might understand and realize uh, that it's all about you and it's not about us. Uh, help us, oh God, that we would get in the vein or get in the groove of the process, oh God. You designed a process for it. Uh, help us today, oh God, uh, and give us understanding, oh God and knowledge give us wisdom from your word today god for we need your help, we need your help. Yes, 
You said in all thy getting, getting understanding. Help us that we might understand your word. Help us that we might understand what the call of the day is, my God. Uh, oh, God, uh, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, not in man's, oh, God, spirit, uh, but your spirit, oh, God. Uh, your spirit that destroys the yoke. Uh, your spirit that causes us to live a righteous and a holy life, uh, God. God, in the name of Jesus, uh, touch this morning, uh, heal and deliver this morning. Uh, oh, God, as we lift up holy hands, uh, oh, God, unto you today, touch us today. Uh, heal our minds, oh, God. Touch every situation today uh, for your name's sake. Do it because of your word. Uh, do it because of your word. Uh, do it because of your word. Uh, oh, God. Uh, do it because of your word, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, now, God, we thank you even right now. And we bind, oh, God, every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. For your word is truth, God. And we thank you for the truth of God this morning in the name of Jesus. Now bless us. Keep us in the sin of your will. Touch the saints of God all over the world, across the land and across the seas. Bless the saints of God. Bless the saints of God. Bless us this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Amen and amen. Good morning, City of David. Good morning, good morning. It is a good day to be alive. And it is a good day to be in God's presence just one more time. Another time to bless him, another time to praise him, another time to give him thanks for what he's done brought us through. Down here in Houston, we didn't had a hurricane and a tornado back to back. And look at how God has brought us through all these storms and these trials. And we just want to tell him thank you. And I'm going to be reading from uh, Psalms 100. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I read to you Psalms 100, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Keep praising the Lord. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy. He's so worthy of the praise. Praise God. We love you, Jesus. Oh, God. We had a great time. I just want to testify to the blessings of us being in our convocation. We came out of it, and the Lord came in and blessed us tremendously. And we are back to our normal status quo in praising God, but I love coming to church and praising the worship, praising and worshiping God because we get our strength from praising and worshiping him. And, and then on, not just the strength, but we get more learning and get more of his spirit. So with that note, Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells, joy bells. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord, keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord, keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, keeps ringing.
ringing in my soul. Go through keeps ringing in my soul. Go through keeps ringing in my soul. Go through, go through, go through keeps ringing in my soul. Joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Hallelujah keeps ringing in my soul. Hallelujah keeps ringing in my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord keeps ringing in my soul. What more can he do? What more can Jesus do? Well, he laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can he do? What more more can he do? What more can Jesus do? Well, he laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can he do? What more? Can he do? What more can Jesus do? Well, he laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can he do? What more can he do? What more can Jesus do? Well, he laid the foundation. He laid the foundation and he laid the foundation and he laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can he do? My soul say yes. Yes, Lord. So say yes. Yes, Lord. So say yes. Yes, Lord. So say yes. Yes, Lord. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Help me call him. Help me call him. Jesus. Jesus. What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant. Get her in the joy of the Lord. Just a little while to stay. Just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor. In the path that's always straight Just a little more of trouble In this lowly state In the red the same total Sweeping through the early gates One more time Just a little while to stay here just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor in the path that's always straight. Just a little while to stay here. 
just a little more of trouble in this world for my self's Nothing's in the sky, there's no mortal sweeping through the pearly gate. After a while. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be over, yeah. After a while, the sun will shine. After a while, the clouds will pass over. And we'll shout hallelujah after a while. Let's all be over. After a while, the sun will shine. After a while, the clouds will pass over. And we'll shout hallelujah after a while. After a while, the sun will shine. After a while, dark clouds will pass over. And we'll shout, hallelujah, after a while. And we'll shout, and we'll shout, yeah. And we'll shout, my God, hallelujah, yeah. And we'll shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Call his name. Call his name. Call his name. Call his name. What's his name? Jesus. 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 I love to call him. I love to call him. Help me praise him. Jesus. Oh, J E S U S. 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 J E S U S J E S U S J E S U S What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus Jesus I love to call him I love to call him Jesus Jesus Power in Jesus. Jesus. I love to call him. I love to call him. Power. Power. Help me, power. Power, power. 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 Need more power. More power, need more power. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power. Power, 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 Jesus. Power, Jesus. Power, power. Come on down. Power, come on down. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, 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 
power. Power, power. Power. Power, power. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Glory. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. We wanna, I want to testify this. I want to thank God for once again another Women's Day that he has blessed us to be in. And most of all, I praise God for what he's doing. Now, my testimony that I'm going to bless us and bless me and, and how God has blessed us yeah. is that God has saved my daughter-in-law, yeah. saved my son, yeah. saved my daughter. Yeah. And when I think about this, I thought about it when we was in the convocation. And I began to begin to like, you know how you be praising the Lord. And I began to praise God and I was thinking about it and I said, when the devil tried to take their lives, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, oh, yeah. when the devil tried to take their lives yeah, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't on the same situ same day or anything like that, yeah. but it was in separate occasions. Yeah. And I began to think about it. And then when I began to, the Lord began to give it back into my mind yeah. and me thinking about it. Yeah. I had to praise God and I thank him because even at them times, I was praying for my children to get saved. I was praying that God will move and, and act upon his promise. And he did just that. And he moved according because the devil wanted to take them out of here. But God said, no, no, no. And I praise God for that. Y'all might not praise God, but I praise God. Facebook man, I want you to know that God is a healer. God is a deliverer. He is a helper. He is a provider. He is everything that you know you need. And most of all, he will save your soul from hell. And I praise God for that. I praise God because he... He is yet still saving more people. And I got three more children I want God to save. And I know that he will do it. He said he would do it. We have to stand on his promises. And I praise God. I wanted to cut a step, but I, I said I got to testify this. And I thank God because he is so good. He is so good. And not only just that. He delivered me, and I praise God that he is keeping yet me. And I thank God how good he has just been so good, so good, so good, so good. He is awesome, such an awesome God. So now that I've done that, I want to open up our women's department, which we have. And I just want to thank God for my daughter-in-law. Now, she is a wonderful soul. A wonderful soul. I love her. She might think, you know, well, Mama Cat sometime. I don't know. But I love you so much. I love you, love you, love you. And, and that's not just because of you getting ready to speak, but I praise God for you. And I love the fact that when my son said he was going to marry you, he was very adamant. I want you to know that he was adamant. I know that you know this, but he was so adamant. Mommy, I'm going to marry her. I'm going to marry her. I'm like, are you sure? I'm going to marry her. And he was so stern and firm. I never seen him to be that firm about anything other than selling his, uh, when he used to sell the snacks and stuff at the high school. <laughs> so, uh, but he was definitely sure, sure, sure. And I'm like, wow, praise God. Well, God, you know what you're doing. And he did it and he made it happen. And then from that union, I love the fact that he gave me three grand, four grandkids. 
got three girls and a grand boy. And his name is Little Benjamin. So God is so good. So good. And before she comes up, let me introduce also my other daughter. My daughter, Dania. She is an awesome soul. She is every bit like her daddy. She is every bit like Pastor Jones. And I praise God for her. I praise God for her because she is such a wonderful and my baby girl, my Buna. I love you. <laughs> uh, it may be live, but I, it's me. Praise God. And I just want you to know that I am so proud of God in you. Because he, is, he has transformed you. And he is making you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. He is making you to the desired vessel. That he wants you to be. And you can do it. And you going to be all that you going to be. Because he's going to take you like a, a, a hybrid rose. And he's going to make you like a floribunda. He's going to blossom you. And you going to bless lives. You going to bless so many people. Even when you think that you not. You're doing it now. God is doing it in you. And he has his way of how he's going to do it. Same thing for you, DJ. He going to do it just the same. You going to touch lives. And lives that you thought that, you know, well, they didn't get it. No, they got it. They got it. Because they going to make sure that they mention you because of God. The Lord is doing things. So, at this time, I want to present to you all Facebook land and in our city of David land. Miss DJ, which is Deja Jones. Amen. Amen. And coming after her is going to be Dania Jones. Good morning. I do want to thank God for letting us see another day and letting us see another Sunday. I do want to uh, start off, before I start off, I want to do prayer. Dear Lord, thank you again for this wonderful day that you have given us and let us see, uh, let us witness your grace and mercy. Lord, this is the time we are about to spend with you. I pray that this word will touch someone in your word. It's just like a double edged sword. It's supposed to help me and it's also supposed to help someone out. So, Lord. Again, I pray that we get home safe, and, and thank you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So today I am speaking about uh, love versus mind. Oh, today I'm speaking about love versus mind. And my first scripture scripture I'm coming from is 1 John 4, 7 through 10. Again, it's 1 John 4, 7 through 10. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And this, the love of God, was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that, w that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. So I have, do have a testimony before I start. 
I used to think that I knew what love was and how how I'm supposed to act on love towards people. But until well, until I met the Joneses, um, it used to irk me <laughs> when they used to ask me how my day was. It was just like, why do you keep asking me how my day was? Like, just leave me be. Like, <laughs> but eventually, like, they and then the, at the end, they they genuinely want to know what how your day was, and you're gonna have an actual conversation about it. And so, well, I didn't. I never grew up like that. Like, I never me and my, my my parents. We didn't talk about our day. We didn't talk about what we're going through life or things like that. Now, I'm not saying that my parents didn't love me or anything like that. We just never just asked how our day was. How are you feeling today? Kind of thing. Um, sorry, but um, however, the Joneses did make me uh, did introduce me to how to act on love and how to just communicate. However, but we're going to talk about spiritually love that that love just cannot be beat. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for us. Paul said in Romans 5 that for scarcely, for scarcely, for scarcely, thank you, for a righteous man will, will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Which he was right, because I only have one son. My cat only got one son, and if Sister Harrison was here, she got one grandson. And I know we just like, mm. I know it's something else that we can do. I, I just know it's something else that we can do. But, however, Jesus did the most loving thing that anyone can imagine. Nothing can top that love. Loving God is an important step in your walk. The same way you spend time with your partner or spend time doing something that you love, it's the same time you're supposed to spend with God, even really even more. God talks about love a lot in the Bible. He teaches, and I really love this, God talks about love a lot in the Bible. He teaches how to love and what love actually is. And also in my um, my study Bible, it gives us facts. So I just wanted to read those really quick. Keeping God's word is the proof that we love God. When we love our brother, we will live without stumbling. We are not to love the world or the things in the world. We cannot love the world and love God also. God, God's love promoting him to make us his children through the death of his son Loving other believers is a fundamental requirement of, of the Christian life. A failure to love other Christians raises serious questions about the gen genuineness of our faith. Genuine, genuine love always results in action, not merely sentimental words. God is the source of all love. Mature love does not produce fear, but instead imparts courage. Long before we loved God, he loved us first. And I got another testimony, y'all. So when I got, uh, when I, not when I first got saved, but it was like in the middle. Um, I was reading the Bible. I was doing what I have to do. And I just felt like it was a missing piece. Like it was just like, I, I don't know what it is. It's just, I feel like ugh, it's not connecting. I'm not connecting to God. Like I'm not hearing him. I'm just not, it's something missing. And I found out. That like well before I found out I like it's like I knew like I knew who God was He's Kings of Kings Almighty God He's you know everything you're supposed to go him to him for everything. However, I knew that by only just um, from the Bible. Like I used to I used to read the Bible like like I was studying for a test, and that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to read it and you're supposed to ma not manifest it, but you're supposed to absorb it into your heart into your soul. And so what I was missing was love. I, I felt like I did not love God. And that was that was hard for me. And I did have to fast and pray about it. And it did work. Um, it's just it took me to be in silence. And there's nothing wrong with being in silence. Like the pastor said, there's nothing wrong with being in silence. You can be in silence in your car or you can be in silence when you clean it up. That's my best time to be in silence. So with me doing that, I did. um I did realize that that I do love God because I had to sit on things like the little things that I had to uh, go that he brought me through. So it was just like, man, I, he did that for me. Like for me, it's like so many people, how many souls on this earth and God did that for me. Like you just got to think about it for me, like little old me, like, but yeah, thank you, God. I love you, God.
man. And the way that he, he moves your life for you to just come to him. And he just know oh, this, this, she about to come to me now. Mm -mm. Like it's time to stop playing. Come on. But the Lord did that for me. However, loving God was the easy part. I, it did sound a little hard, but it was, it was easy. But now it's time for the hardest part, which is the renewing of your mind. So my scripture for renewing of your mind is 12, 1 and 2. And I love that that's your favorite scripture. You always say that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transferred by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that, prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. Coming from being worldly to save by Christ is not, not a cakewalk. Oh, Thinking yeah. about all the things Lord has done for you and falling in love with the Lord is can be easy versus the hard part again, healing your mind. Yeah. We are to renew our minds and crucify the old man. Yeah. I am honestly still trying to re uh, heal my mind, constantly yeah. rebuking, cursing, bad thoughts, bad yeah. ideas. In right. oh. Colossians 3, 2, it says, set your minds on things above and not on things on the earth. Yeah. I like to think of... I like to think of the mind being soil, yeah. how it's growing, how is it fed through your ears, your eyes, and through your mouth. Yeah. And I, have, I remember I had to tell Kamari one day, and she was really sad, and I was like, you can't be dwelling on being sad, because that's how the devil gets in. He gets in, he, he puts in de deceitful things in your mind, thinking, oh, I need to get my lick back, yeah. or, or, or am I really ugly, or am I really this? No, you're not. So you have to, uh, if you... <laughs> Long. <laughs> so for seeing to help you heal your mind what are you watching what are you who who and what are you seeking for guidance when you need help yeah. for hearing from sister harrison's when she spoke she said who and what are you listening to yeah. and for your mouth what are you eating and what are you drinking yeah. to help heal your mind to be renewed we are to seek the lord and yeah. Acts 17 it says we should yeah. seek the lord and in, in hope that he should Find, hope that we should find him through yeah. though he is not far from each one of us oh, yeah. seeking the lord is by prayer worship fasting and reading his word yeah. it helps to just sit in silence so this is just uh for hearing i think i think the pap the i think the pastor said no no you did say it, in your sermon sitting in silence again is how you the how the lord can give you your next steps and how and just you just have to clear your mind think about the lord even just think just sing praises in your head, like, yeah. of how, thank you, of whatever situation that you're going through. Yeah. And the Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord will speak to you. He might he not, <laughs> he might not at that time, yeah. but he will. Just just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And for the feeding of your mouth, the Bible says, First, first Peter 5 and 8, Stay sober and be vigilant because the devil is proudly seeking who he may devour. devour. We have to keep our minds on God through everything, yeah. uh, through good and bad situations. His praise should continue to be in your mouth. Yeah. The Bible is the bread of life. Yeah. So thank you all for letting me talk. Um, thank you, Pastor, for letting me talk. Thank you, Mama Cat. <laughs> continue to pray for me, guys. Thank you, Deja. That was insightful. Very insightful. Wonderful job. For y'all that don't know, no, she always nervous. <laughs> but you did a awesome and wonderful job. And let the Lord to keep on using you and to keep on getting you out of your comfort zone. Because, baby, 
what you have the world needs to hear it from a different point of perspective and so i'm just praying that he keeps elevating you and keep on going that's my sister not just my sister in christ but that's my sister my best friend and i didn't think that i ever would need but you are all that you know not all that i need hold on <laughs> Fire ass just being saved, somebody that I can confide in. You in that need right there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so we're going to go into, I'm coming from Mark um, 10, verses 46 through 52. And um, what I'm speaking about is at the right place at the right time. And when you have, you can say amen. I don't want to move on without nobody. Mark 10 verses 46 through 52. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho. With his, with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Yeah. Then they many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called then they called the blind man saying to him, "Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you." And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, "What do you want me to do for you?" The blind man said to him, "Rabbi, Rabbani, I'm sorry, um that I may receive my sight." Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. May the Lord have a blessing and a hearing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. And so I'm not going to be before you long. I have three or four short couple points. But as you begin to, as I begin to read this, um, I know there's a song that goes by Marvin, that's by Marvin Winans. And it's called Reach Out and Touch Him. And they sing, a blo they sing about Blind Bartimaeus. And as I listen to the song, I never really under, I never, I read about Blind Bartimaeus, but never really understood it. And so as I read it, um... Because I went and searched, and I was just like, I just want to read about it. Because I always sing that part and never really just, you know, never really just festered on that, you know, passage of reading. And so as I went to go uh, read it, and I seen the most thing that stuck out to me is what Jesus answered blind Bartimaeus. It was kind of funny to me because I was just like, now, Jesus, why would you ask him, what do you want me to do for you? And you know he blind. Like, you, you know that he is blind. And so... It's, it just wondered to me, but not only just to me, but Jesus is asking a question and he asked the question of what do you want me to do for you? And so I had to put that in perspective as if he was asking me that, what do you want me to do for you? And so even though Jesus knew he was blind, he knew that he was begging. So he could most likely he was begging for money. It doesn't say that, but we just going to put a perspective in our minds and assume that he was begging for money because what else? would he be on the side of the road begging for yeah. and so one of the points that I have is when the Lord is leading you places and you feel staggered you feel you're not moving up or down it's because of a reason um he has you there so you can be at the right place at the right time if blind Bartimaeus would have been moving along he would have missed Jesus if he would have continued just to keep begging and not really listening to what people were saying because it had to be people were talking oh you know Jesus coming down this way you heard Jesus was coming you heard Jesus he had to be listening to hear what's going on and just as sister Deja said 
said, sometimes we have to be quiet. Yeah. Blind Bartimaeus had to be quiet to hear what was going on. Yeah. And so as he listened, he heard that Jesus was coming. And so when he heard all the footsteps, because you got to be listening, yeah. he heard all the footsteps. And so at that point, he had to assume that it was Jesus coming. Yeah. And so he had to cry out to Jesus. Uh -huh. Blind Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus when uh, those around him was telling him to basically shh. Shh, baby, it don't take all that. You you ain't gotta scream and holler and do all that then. You it don't take all that for Jesus. And some churches will really do that. Yeah. I know a church I had went to a church when I was younger, uh, with one of my friends and it was just more so like when I was crying out to God because I was going through um, suicidal thoughts at that time. And I was on the altar and it was kind of like they was just like, shh, like, it's okay, it's okay. And just walked me back to my seat. But they didn't understand what the need was. Uh -huh. yeah. They didn't understand why I was crying out the way I was crying out. Yeah. Yeah. And so... When you have, you do have, like I said, you have some churches that are like that. And so when they do some certain things like that, you have to cry out just as blind Bartimaeus is, Jesus, yeah. son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah. Because you don't, people that assist you don't know what you're going through. You don't have to physically talk about it to other people for them to know what you're going through. Sometimes it just takes a cry. Sometimes it just takes a screaming of yelling from the top of your lungs telling him to have mercy on you. And so that's what blind Bartimaeus did. He didn't do it because he wanted attention. He did it because he had a need for something. So when you're crying out and you see somebody crying out, it's because they have a need. And so when you see that, be mindful of what you're doing. Because you don't understand what you're doing. Because if they would have kept telling him to be quiet, Jesus would have never even heard him and kept going. But Jesus stood still and heard what he was crying out. And so Jesus stood still and asked, what do you want me to do for you? Yeah. When you get saved and you confess your sins to God and believe it within your heart that Jesus is the son of God, yeah. he asks you right then and there, what do you want me to do for you? He already knows what you want. He knows what you need. But what does the Bible say? You have to make your request known. Sometimes you got to be specific. Sometimes you got to be in the right place at the right time to be specific. Lord, when I go down to this job, <laughs> I need you to touch every desk right now in the name of Jesus. Don't know what they're going through, but I know they got an attitude every day. So whatever that they're going through, don't do it for them, but do it for me. Because just as our pastor said, just because of who I am, I need you to work it out. And so... The funny thing about Jesus, the funny thing, right, because Jesus knew that he was blind, but he still wanted to know, what do you want me to do for you? As you think, blind by the man was begging. He was begging, begging for money, begging for food, begging for somebody to help him do this and do that. But Jesus still asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus sent him, as Jesus, as blind by the man has made his request known, he didn't say, let me receive my sight so I can follow you. <laughs> he didn't say, you know, let me receive my sight so I can uh, uh, go about doing my daily duties. He just asked him, let me receive my sight. And so Jesus, as Jesus blessed blind Bartimaeus, he sent him on his way. But the Bible says that immediately he got his sight and followed Jesus. Yeah. And as I realize this, I'm just like, how many of us get what we want from Jesus and then just go? We don't come back to say thank you. Just as he said, well, I gave y'all all gifts. Why did you bury yours and you didn't use it? Like, why, why would you not use it to, to my advantage to lead people to me? You got your blessing, but you kept quiet about it. You didn't testify about it. You didn't tell anybody, let me tell you what God did for me, baby. Because God knew what the need was. And so, but blind Bartimaeus 
followed Jesus. As he received his sight, he followed Jesus. He could have went back to begging. There was no room, no more room for begging at that point. There was no more room for asking for money. There was no more room asking for food. Blind Bartimaeus already got what all that he needed from Jesus. And as he got what he needed, he followed Jesus. There was no more room for begging at that point in time. Thank you, Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus received his blessing and didn't go back to begging. He got exactly what he needed, and he didn't beg no longer. So how many of us, when we get saved and we say we love God, we go back to the things that kept us in bondage? Paul told the Galatians, why are y'all going back to the things that kept y'all in bondage? You know God, or rather, God, or being known by God, and you go back to the things, you go back to that relationship, you go back to those friendships, you go back to areas that you in, in areas where you shouldn't be at, and you know the enemy is going to use that to your advantage. And so we need to be like blind Bartimaeus, asking for sight. Because God will begin to open our eyes to see things like we never seen it before. And as I was as I was praying this week, um, I believe it was on Wednesday, I just began to worship God. I remember moving into my apartment and I had to sleep on my couch because I didn't have a bed. I wanted to get rid of my bed. It was just so many I'm going to say spirits within that bed because it was things that I was doing that wasn't of God. That when I blessed my apartment, I didn't want the things that were of not God being in a place with God. And so as I began, as I did that, I was sleeping on my couch. I didn't complain at one time. I didn't say, Lord, just give me a bed, this, that, and the third. But I remember I was searching for a king-size bed. I said, I want a king. You know, I'm getting money right now. I want a king-size bed in my apartment. And so looking at the prices, it wasn't going to work out until later on next year, which is not this year, but it was, I moved in last year, November. And so it's going to be this year, beginning of this year. And so as I was sitting and laying in my couch, I remember that Deja sent me a, a message and she was just like, call Aunt Tina right now. Go to Aunt Tina. She got a king size vest. She giving away this and the third. And so I just remember just sleeping. And as I re reading the message with my eyes half open, I jumped up, called Aunt Tina. And I was just like, hey, Deja told me that you got a bed. Oh, uh, what you selling it? Or she was just like, you know what? If it's going to bless you, then you can come and get it. All that you need is just to get the moving truck and so as I began to think about it I didn't complain I, I didn't I didn't I didn't realize what was going on I just knew that I needed to get a moving truck that's how that was in my mind and so as I sleep in my bed every night the sleep is different <laughs> The sleep is 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 so sweet that it's just renewing my mind and my body. And I just praise God for all that he has done. I thank him because at the times, there was things that I couldn't even pay for. I had more bills than money. But Jesus asked me, what do you want me to do for you? And as I made my request known to him, now I'm in a manager position. Never been a manager before. And as I sit in the seat, and, I, and sometimes I begin to complain, but I say, you you know what God you led me here so I know that you're gonna keep me here and so as blind Bartimaeus went to follow Jesus it's not a time to give up it's not a time to throw in the towel it's the time to keep on going in Jesus keep on following him because you know why your feet may hurt sometimes your mind may doubt you sometimes your heart may flow away from him but he said what do you want me to do for you Woo! Blind by the mayors. Thank you. Jesus said that to him. What do you want me to do for you? And it resonates in my spirit because as we battle with our mind and with our with love and, and versus the mind, sometimes the mind wins. Sometimes the love conquers. But baby, when you got Jesus in the midst of it, he said, I stand, he stood still in the midst of all the crowd. And I'm pretty sure they kept on walking. He said, uh-uh. Y'all call, call that blind, y'all call him and bring him to me. 
And so I thank him for all that he has done. I thank him for asking, what do you want me to do for you? I thank him for standing still. And when you are in the midst of your troubles, when you are in the midst of your valley, sometimes you just got to cry out, have mercy on me. Have mercy, son of David, son of Nazareth, Jesus, the way maker, the provider. He is a provider. He is a provider. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Give your name the praise. Give your name the glory. And so I thank him. I thank him for all that he has done. It's too much to sit there and say to y'all, but if I can thank him every morning I wake up, I will. And so now we are in the hands of our first lady. Thank the Lord for the, the messages that have came forth. God is so good. I know y'all heard the word. God is so good. He's, he's showing us how good he is by showing us what his word represents to new younger minds. See, in my mind is an old mind. I'll go back to the old messages. But when I start looking and listening at what these young people are dealing with, my God, God is letting us know that he is a heart fixer, a mind regulator. This is what he does. He is the champion of all of that. He knows how to regulate things. When we think we know how to regulate, we ain't regulating nothing. All we regulating is our mouth. Our, our ugliness that we know to do but God he comes in when he you want change you get change but you gotta want it like he said knock and the door shall be open seek and the door you will find and he's gonna open it up to you seek knock and what else I think it's three three things. You see, ask. That was the last. You when you start asking God, He blesses you. But you gotta be in Him. You just can't be anybody. He's this, He said, "Come without money, come without price." But there is a price. The price is gonna be that you sacrifice your life. It goes back to what my daughter-in-law said. Yeah. Romans 12, 1. Yeah. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Yeah. I beg you. Yeah. I beg you. Yeah. Prove him and see if he won't do it. Yeah. He gonna do it. He, do it. he ain't just uttering words like we do sometimes. Yeah. We'll say something and then we back out and we go, oh, I can't do it right now. Yeah. Not God. Yeah. You ain't gonna ever hear him say that. He may tell you not right now. Yeah. But when, if anything, he going to bring it to pass. Yeah. His word is going to bring it to pass. So we got so much to thank God, but I enjoy the message. I enjoy the message. The message is awesome. And it just lets us see at how good God is. And he just keeps multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. You go from one level to the next level. And that's what God does. He, he take you through this test. You went through the, the little medial stages. Now he got to he gotta exalt you. And when he starts to exalt you, that's when you know, 
I'm growing. I'm nowhere where I used to be. That's why when we sing these 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 uh, congregational songs, it ministers. It don't just just minister to you. It ministers to me. Because I sit at home sometimes and I be praising God and I begin to praise God, not just in song, but even in shouting and dancing. Praise God. I give God glory because he is so awesome in that field of what he does. He does it so beautifully and he teaches us how to stay in him. I praise God for that. Most of all, I thank God for how he blesses y'all because y'all continue to keep seeking and, and reading your word and proving what he says. He's proven the word and he just keeps doing his thing. And that's why when I posted one time, I said, God got this. This is what he do. This is him. And God is so awesome. Again, I want you all to look up what a Florabunda rose look like. And like I said, you ladies, y'all are going to be so blossoming. You already blossoming. But God is taking you to another level. And he's going to continue to do it. I praise God for you. And I praise God for the word. And most of all, my son, please forgive me. I didn't have you come up and sing. But God is so good. So good. And I want to thank the Lord for my friends coming in today. Praise God for, oh, praise God. I'm, I'm already, now I'm a little starstruck as shit coming in right now. But I praise God for Mr. Damon Redding. Praise God. I love his his opening. Amen. I'm going to say it anyhow. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. And I praise God for his wife. She's so beautiful. Oh, praise God. And I'm glad y'all made it back safely. Praise God. Um, Pastor Jones, I want to thank you. And we're going to bring him forth. And thanking him for allowing us to have another Women's Day. And now next week, God is going to bless us with the young people even greater. All right. Praise God. Amen. 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 We do, amen, give honor to God and we thank the Lord. Amen. Not yet. Not yet. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For the word that went forth on today. Amen. God is awesome. Praise God. Amen. God is awesome. And so I tip my hat, amen, to you all this morning. What an awesome job that you all done this morning. Praise God. Amen. Did not hearts burn within as they spoke to us, by the way. Praise God. And so we thank God for the word. It's all about the word. Praise God. And I declare at the city of David that we're growing by leaps and bounds. Praise God. And so we just thank God for you, you. And you, praise God. Now, uh, my wife really didn't do it justice, um, and I'm going to try to do it some kind of justice. Praise God, amen. The Bible says give honor where honor is, is due. Is that all right? And, and so um, we hear this young man on YouTube all the time. My wife is just keyed in. Praise God. Facebook, Facebook, praise God. And he's going to come up. And I know I'm putting him on the spot, but we're going to keep Facebook up because he used to it already. And so he's going to come up today and he's going to introduce himself. But I want him to give his little spiel like he do when he first starts, amen, his analyzing of the videos, praise God. And so what we're going to do is actually we're going to ask his wife if she would like to have words. And then we're going to have him come up. Is that all right? Praise God. Amen. Come on, say hi to us. You can come up here, stand there, and say hi to us. Praise God. Amen. It's up to you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 
she might be a little shy today, so I, I don't never see her on the videos, but her husband is coming, and he ain't shy. And so we're going to have him come, and he's going to say hello to us on today. We thank God for him. Praise God. Let's give God some praise for him. It's always, um, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I got, I got ridiculed uh, when I went to my dad's church and didn't give honor to the pastors and all, you know. So let me, let me give honor to the pastors and to the pastor, the first lady and, and any other ministers in the building. Let me, let me do that. Um, cause they, they will tell you up in the comments, man. They listen, um, this is beautiful. Um, I'm so glad to be here. Um, First Lady reached out to me, and um, you guys were having something in July, and I was unable to, to make it on the 6th. I think you had something. And I said, well, let me do it on the 21st. And then I was supposed to be out of town. And um, I said, well, that that got changed to the 28th. So I said, well, well, I'm not going to be here on the 21st. Let's do it for the 28th. But then the 21st got changed to the 28th. I said, I can't, I can't change it again. So I had to just go on and surprise you and, 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 and show them up. <laughs> Did he? Did <laughs> he? Amen. Amen. Listen, you know, and, and, and I just, I, I love meeting people. I want to just say thank you guys for your support. Um, I tell I tell everybody all the time it is not it is not me. Um, there will be no me without you, you know, pastor. And you can relate. You without without your members, who do you pastor? You know what I'm saying? Well, without without your members, who do you pastor? It's the members that that make the church. It's the members, and 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 I, I, I'll never forget that Chick Fil A had a saying. Um, it says we have two rules. Rule number one, the customer is always right. And rule number two, refer back to rule number one. Right? Because they understood that without Chick-fil-A or without the customers, there could be no Chick-fil-A. We miss that in the body of Christ. We miss that. We, we, we think it's about the one behind the microphone. The one in front of the camera. No, listen, I would just be another voice on Facebook, another voice on Instagram and TikTok if people didn't tune in. You know what I'm saying? If, if y'all didn't tune in and say, man, he got something to say. Let me, let me watch this. Let me share this. Let me share. I would just be another voice on, in the wind. Got some great things to say, but who's listening? You see, it's about the people. And I think when we, when we as the body of Christ start putting um, appreciation and gratitude in the pews. I posted a video this morning. The, the pastor actually called church members dangerous, ignorant. He called them, uh, uh, you saw that? What? Are there church members that are going to disrespect you? Sure. As you guys grow, as you guys continue to increase, are there church members that are going to come and leave? Sure. That's part of it. That's part of it. Corporate America shows us that. You ain't at the same job you started. <laughs> right? They ain't got the same. Come on. Managers change, supervisors getting your change switched out. You leave, they leave. It's a part of it, but in the church we think that, oh, you joined, then you got to stay for life. No. No, there's a season. There's a season. There's a time. And so he, he dogged the church. As I say, say, man, pastors got to understand, are there church members that you're going to invest in and hurt you? Yes. Did not Jesus invest in Judas? He invested in Judas. And did not Judas, what did he tell you? Did he dog Judas out? He didn't dog Judas out. He told Judas, whatever you're going to do, do it what? Do it quickly. <laughs> 
And he and, and he broke bread with him. Right. Listen, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the, the other 11 were wondering who was the one he was talking about. He said, there's one among us. <laughs> and they were looking like, is it me? Is it me? Is it, is it you? Is it me? Is it me? They didn't know. He didn't out them. He didn't out Judas because he could have. He could have said, Judas, stand up. Whatever you do, go do it quickly. The Bible says that Satan entered the heart of Judas. He entered in him. And that's what happens. Some, some, some church members, the Satan enters into them. And they start conniving and deceiving and betraying and rebelling. We wrestle not against what? Come on now. And so Jesus didn't out him. The 70 that, that left him, when 70 left him, he turned to the 12. He said, are you going to leave too? They said, where are we going to go? You got the words of life. So Jesus had people leave him. He had people leave him. But he didn't out him. He still prayed for him. He still had compassion on him. He still loved him. And that's what we got to be, man. Whether big or small, we got to be lovers of people. It is on the other side of love where miracles happen. <laughs> they just talked about it. <laughs> Amen. It's on the other side. On the other side of that love, that's where miracles happen. Jesus said he was moved with compassion. And because of that compassion he was moved with, he began to heal. Miracles happened. But 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 First Corinthians tell us we can have prophecy, we can have all faith, we can. He, it, it says we can even give all our substance away. It said, Pastor, it even said we can give our bodies to be burned. But have not. We're not and you would think a person who's diving in the fire, who gonna get their body to be burned? I will. You you would think that that person is is, is filled with the love of God. He said, you can give your body to be burned and still have not love. Love is the key to healing, increase, growth, relationship. It's everything. So if I have anything to you, walk in love. <laughs> walk in love. Walk in love. And listen, listen, ain't cute. Love ain't cute. <laughs> Romans in the second chapter tells us that 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 forbearance, long suffering, those are attributes of love. Kindness, goodness, those are attributes of love. When somebody is dogging you out, you still got to be kind. You do somebody with, 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 with some, how long are you gonna suffer? How long? How long you gonna go through that, Lord? How long am I gonna? He said. He said, "Hey, that part of it, that part of love, long suffering. You got to forbear. You got to forbear. You got to forbear. You got to go through. So when we talk about love, that's a lot. But I'm gonna shut up and sit down. Uh, <laughs> thank y'all. Listen. Yes, sir." Uh, my name is Damon Redding. Uh, I go by Mr. Be Heard. Uh, it is Be Heard, period, on all social media, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Um, not really so much on YouTube, but we're, we're going to go over there soon. Um, I do a Bible study every morning. Uh, start at 9 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we, we're going through the Book of Romans right now. I think we just started Romans 3. So tune in if you can. If you can't, watch the replay. And um, I host one of the biggest church shows in, in, in the world, and literally in the world. Things the black church going to get mad at me for saying. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love y'all, man. <laughs> Praise God.
Yeah, I like that. They don't get mad at me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Praise God. Amen. We thank and praise. Amen. God for him and his wife to stop by. Praise God. Sister Jones literally called him up. I said, honey, you called him up? She said, yeah, I wanted him to come. I'm like, he's a celebrity. You can't. Uh, and But, you know, she she be on there doing it. And so we just thank God for him and his wife. Thank you for sharing with us on today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And so we do have to have love. Amen. If we're going to grow. Amen. And here at the city, we're growing by leaps and bounds. And you know our saying, we don't give out band-aids. Praise God. Amen. We come to do a complete job. Is that right? Praise God in the word of God. And so we thank God for you and you. Amen. We ask that you would uh, tune in this week. Amen. We're going back to our regular schedule this Wednesday night at 730. Tune in for Impact Wednesdays. And I guarantee you we have something that's going to change your life. God bless you and have a good afternoon.